Welcome to the 2020 Bishop's Christmas Pageant here at Grace Cathedral and in the Diocese of California, my office. I'm really happy to be with all of you, even though this is a very, very different year. We're still having the Bishop's Christmas Pageant, and we're so happy to welcome all the families, all the children to this wonderful event. I hope you're in as festive and as comfortable a space as I'm in, but um, make yourself comfortable. And we're going to hear some wonderful stories from Scripture, and you're going to see some wonderful images of children from all around the diocese and from, from here at Grace Cathedral. And the children are not going to look like they do every day. They're going to be taking the roles of shepherds and angels and uh, wise people. And there are going to be stars, and there's going to be beautiful, beautiful Christmas music as there is every year. And the main thing is we're together. And we're celebrating the most sacred story at the most sacred time of the year, the story of the birth of Jesus. Every year when I introduce the pageant, when we're in Grace Cathedral, right across the plaza, I remind people that this practice of having a Christmas pageant hasn't gone on forever, but it has gone on for a very long time, 800 years. There's a statue of St. Francis, the patron saint of San Francisco, one of our patrons here at Grace Cathedral, right inside the doors of Grace Cathedral. If you came through the great Ghiberti doors, and you look to your left, you would see a great bronze statue of Francis in the shape of the Tau cross with his arms stretched out like this as a way of saying the sculptor, the artist, was saying that Francis was welcoming everyone. And one of the ways that Francis welcomed everyone, helped people feel that God loved them and that they were close to God and close to each other, close to the earth, was he started this practice of the Christmas pageant. Up until that time, when Francis was alive, people read the stories from the Bible in a sacred language, Latin. And it was not the language that people used in everyday talk. They didn't talk to each other in Latin. Common people like me and you used their language, uh, English in our case, or my case, or maybe Italian in Francis's case. What is your native language? But that wasn't the language that they heard the scriptures read in, heard sermons, heard the worship services in. That was the sacred language called Latin, and only a few people could read it, and fewer still could speak it. And Francis thought this was a shame, because the story of Christmas was a story of God's love for everyone. So he started this practice in a little town in Italy, uh, Greccio, where he got real people to take the roles of Mary and Joseph and the wise people and the angels. And there were animals, just as there are usually in Grace Cathedral. There were donkeys and oxen and sheep. And they would go in procession to a cave, which is probably where Jesus was born, a cave that was repurposed as part of an inn. And they would act out the story of Christmas. So Christians have been doing that for 800 years since then, and we too here at Grace Cathedral do this each year as a way to proclaim this beautiful story and say it's a story that belongs to you, and it belongs to me, and it belongs to the world. So welcome to this Christmas pageant and to all the beauty and the wonder and mystery that is Christmas.
reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of King David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we jealous of heart, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following on your star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, seizing never over a soul to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still. Light. 
we've heard the sacred story. We've seen children taking the roles of wise people and shepherds and angels and the Holy Family. And now I think we are all asking somewhere in our hearts, what does this mean? What's the deeper meaning of this story? What does it make us feel? How does it help us think about our lives and who we are, where our world is? One thing we can say about the birth of Jesus is that a child always represents hope. The birth of a child is the birth of hope. It's the reaffirmation that life is good, that life continues, that the shadows and the night that seem to threaten do not have the last word. The light of the star overwhelms the shadow. The birth of the child overwhelms the fears that we have in our lives. So let us take that. Let us take that meaning, that hope. Christmas comes in the middle of the winter, around the time of the shortest day and the longest night. And as Lawrence Vanderpost has said, in the midst of the deepest night, the longest night of each year, the new year, the new day, the longest day is born. Good morning. It's Christmas Eve day, and I'm Mark Andrus, the Bishop of the Diocese of California, and this is Grace Cathedral, uh, our cathedral here in San Francisco up on Knob Hill, and we are in the middle of the 2020 Bishop's Christmas pageant. I wish all of you were here in this space with me as we are every year up till now. And usually, last year, I think it was over a thousand of us were all here for this wonderful occasion that makes our hearts so glad. And I wish that I were not wearing this mask, but I'm glad that you are home safe. And I'm glad I'm wearing this because it's all about thinking about keeping ourselves safe and keeping those we love safe and even those we don't know who we come in contact with. This is a year when we're showing restraint and sacrificing some things that we really love in order to do something even more important, which is keep people safe. We've heard the sacred stories of the birth of Jesus, and we've seen all the characters coming forward in uh, children in costumes, in, in photographs, as shepherds, as the Holy Family, as wise people and as angels. And normally, we would all be all the way up front, in front of the altar where a facade will make it look like we're in Bethlehem, and we'll be gathered there, well over 100 children and a couple of us adults. And this would be the time that many of us, I included, look forward to the most in this beautiful, beautiful pageant. And that is when I invite children to pray, to say what matters to them and what they want all of us, the thousands of us who are part of this service, to pray with them about for the coming year, for the present time. In the past, we've had prayers, many prayers for animals that are part of children's lives that they're concerned about dogs and cats and other animals, some of whom are sick. We've had many prayers for family members. Sometimes children have lost a, a grandparent or a parent. They may have a sibling who's very ill, or someone they love. We've had a lot of gratitude expressed, gratitude for their own health and their own lives and that of people around them, their schools and uh, their teachers. We've even had wonderful and very thoughtful prayers about our national life and the health of the planet. All of these have been on the hearts of children in the 14 years that I've been part of this. This year, we have 
three beautiful prayers that are videoed from three children represent, representing the hundreds who are part of this community who are praying, are thinking about this at this time. You will have a chance to see these beautiful prayers on video in just a moment. I'd like to invite you, wherever you are and with whomever you are, to take a moment to think about what's on your heart, what you want to pray about. You could speak it to somebody who's in the room with you. Parents can be speaking to their children, children to the parents and siblings to each other, friends who are gathered. Take a moment to say what is deepest and most on your heart, both the things that concern you and the things for which you are grateful and glad. These prayers are always heard by God. No matter if we speak them aloud, if you speak them in this time, or if they're silent and within you, God hears them and God loves you and seeks to answer these prayers in a way that will be best for you and best for the world. So let's watch these three beautiful video prayers from children connected to the cathedral now. Twenty twenty was kind of not the best year, but I think this year we kind of learned what we're really grateful for, like our health. A lot of us just took that for granted a lot. Now we don't, and I think we really just learned how to bond together as a community more. Just like learn, like learn from each other. We just had all this extra time to hang out with people we may have lost touch with. So I hope for twenty twenty one that all of you stay healthy. Um, obviously that this ends and just that we learn from this and can grow from it yeah so hope you had a decent enough 2020 and hope you have an amazing 2021 what are you thankful for this christmas i'm thankful for being to together with my family so much of this year what are you oh i'm thankful that we have a new baby in the family my niece and your baby cousin, Helen. I'm also thankful for that. So let me ask you, do you have any Christmas prayer requests? Um, I do. Um, I, um, I would like, I would like Cathedral to pray for my grandfather that is right now in the ICU <clears throat> with COVID. Um, I, and I pray, pray that he gets a smooth recovery. Um, and a quick recovery. Yes, that's right. We're all praying for Papa's family. My prayer is that we've seen the end of racism in our country and around the world. God bless everyone. Amen. And now, in concert with St. Francis, whose statue is behind me, and St. Clair, his spiritual friend, all the saints who great, make a great cloud of witnesses around us, all the people of the earth who are people of prayer, whatever their religion may be, and with all of you, let us lift our prayers to God who is always listening to the prayers of our hearts, spoken or unspoken. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray first for a grandfather who is ill with COVID. We pray for the nurses and doctors and other frontline health workers who are helping him. We pray that his own strength may aid him and the strength in the love of his family and those who know him. Restore him to health. And all those across this country and this world who struggle with this pandemic and all those who help comfort them and heal them. We pray for their health. We pray in gratitude for what we have learned during this year 
unlike any other year we have ever known, whether we are young or old. We pray that we'll be aware of the blessing of community. We have found it in different ways, and we have missed it in the ways to which we are used. May we be healthy as a country, as individuals, in our bodies, our minds, our souls, in 2021. May it be a new year of health and wholeness. We are grateful for our growing awareness of the sin of racism that is woven into the fabric of our lives and has been here for so very long. We're grateful for the new consciousness that is lifting us up to do the hard work it takes to dismantle racism. We dedicate ourselves to this work as we know it is your work the dream of you, of you for us, the dream of God. And now we give you grateful thanks for the birth each year within our hearts, in our midst, of the Christ child, the sign of hope. For a weary world where the night has gone very long and threatens to overwhelm and overshadow our hearts. His birth is the dawning of a new light that cannot be overcome by the shadow. We welcome the birth of the Christ child in our midst, in our lives, in our hearts. We are grateful to you loving God. Amen. When the baby Jesus grew up, he became what was prophesied about him, the Messiah. He became a teacher and a healer and someone who helped people find their way in the world. And one day, his followers, a group of people who he called his friends and who also were his students, asked him, teacher, tell us how to pray. And he taught them a prayer that has become known as the Lord's Prayer. It has been prayed by millions of people for 2,000 years all over the world in every language imaginable. And so we're going to pray that prayer now. And I would invite you, as you're able, to stand. And if you know this prayer, to pray it with me in the language of your heart. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The COVID-19 crisis has caused so many things to stop. But one thing that can never be stopped is Christmas. So on behalf of Grace Cathedral, I'm delighted to welcome you to the Bishop's Christmas Pageant. If you'd like to learn more about the love that Grace Cathedral creates together, go to gracecathedral.org and learn more about Sunday School, our after-school little opera program, or our summer arts program. Until then, Merry Christmas, and enjoy the show.
May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace and the blessing of God, the source of all being, the incarnate word and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen.